Hi everyone, welcome to WYC channel. My name is Rifad. Um, so before beginning uh, the video of this uh, this week, I just want to take the moment to kind of uh, once again thank uh, all the the people that are in the front line, uh, people that are working in nursing home, hospitals, delivering food, working at warehouses, and still going out there working and giving all this uh, all this stuff for for us and um and like being there being the front line i would say uh so that's awesome and and thank you very much uh, i really what to call take my cap out for, for you all out there uh you guys deserve it uh, during this current climate which is challenging and uncertainty um we need people like you and all coming together and all of us together uh just saying and, and on the bottom, of my, bottom of my heart i'm just saying thank you uh, and uh, and awesome and awesome work. Keep up the work. Uh, and uh, thank you. I would say that's that's that sums about it. Um, uh, so now for this week's video, it's pretty much the uh, the stock I bought for March. Uh, so the stock I bought was IBM. And and I want to tell also this video. This week's video is going to be a bit longer than my usual uh, length. Uh, main purpose is it. it I, I really dove deep in this company. I really needed to understand the business and, and understand if they really changed because coming from an IT field, uh, sorry, coming up, working in an IT field, I know uh, what 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 you call the people think when they come into IBM and if someone mentions IBM, even the employee perspective to customer's perspective, I have not always tend to heard, heard good stuff. Uh, so for me, it was really important to better understand did they make those changes? Did they improve from their uh, past mistakes? What is the company's going forward? Uh, all this kind of stuff I need to kind of figure out, read articles, investigate a bit more, and, and get a better global understanding of the company's um, culture, psychology, and everything out of that and everything, and just to kind of see if they can grow going forward. So that's kind of a whole thing I need to put the whole uh, package, I would say. Um, so this video is going to be uh, separated in a bit of uh, of all the stuff that I'm going to do is mostly like talk about the exiting CEO to the new CEO, uh, my thoughts on that, uh, which is for me I think is very important, uh, and then also ending and also doing with the current evaluation of the company, going through the financials, and also finishing with the big elephant in the room, which is Red Hat acquisition. What do I think about them? What is the potential? And uh, what uh, what I mostly uh, my feedback I'll say overall. So let's start off with the exiting CEO, which is uh, Jeannie. Jeannie is leaving. Uh, so she left. Uh, she's leaving soon. I think in April or something like that. I don't know the exact date, uh, but she announced it back in January. Um, that is something important I need to focus on because um, I'm going to use the example as in Microsoft uh, because this is very important when Steve uh, when Steve Ballmer uh, left. Uh, and he gave it over to Satya. Um, that was kind of important because uh, because what Steve implemented and with Satya's ideology and, and way of working kind of hit a hand in hand, so he just continued what he was trying to implement also. So that is something important, so I'm kind of using that uh, comparing to that. Um, and so these are key things that she did when she was there. So she really focused on culture and diversity, female inclusion, um, and also change the mindset from a short-term thinking company to a long-term thinking company and reinforcing blockchain which was uh, something they really had and you, they de she deployed a lot of a uh, lot of resources to that uh, sector of business and also giving employees like 50 hours per year to train uh, so shifting like the business like mindset from like to a growth mindset and not as like a stable mindset thinking I know everything so she's switching that by doing the training and also she kind of reinvented 50% of the IBM's portfolio um, that has come something very important shifting from like you know hardware to software so she was kind of in the middle I would say so kind of the transition I know the stock performance was not the, the greatest and a lot of criticisms came towards that and it was not based on what she was doing behind the scenes which is very important because those are the what I call the brick and and like the foundation for future uh, 
growth and thinking. So I kind of like that stuff that she did. And, and maybe when I said shifting the company from a short term to long term thinking is bef because the previous uh, previous uh, CEO, when he handed over to, to her, was pretty much focused on the short term things, you know, like how can you predict like uh, like he, before he left, he kind of said like, oh, you have to hit this amount of EPS. I will hit this amount of EPS by 2015 or something like that, which was which was kind of unachievable in a way. And and so like it's pretty much saying, hey, G Genie, figure it out. And so what they end up doing was they started just buying back shares, you know, buying back shares to make it look um, look nice, you know, make oh, this my back shares. So the earnings per shares went up, but like and really not investing. So they were kind of buying debt to buy earnings per share, make it better, buy shares, buy shares, and make it look good. And at the end, make the earnings. But at the end, it's not a feasible option because you're making things look nice now, but it's not good in long term. So. Once they realized back in like 2014, uh, they kind of they shifted the whole thing, and they kind of pulled back on their uh, their uh, claim and stuff like that. So, so and she kind of made the whole change afterwards. Um, and I think she was also doing those building blocks to its initial phase. And and I think she didn't even knew. So it's kind of that was kind of an important thing, as you I'm saying, like the past CEO left pretty much like saying, hey, do this, and like Jean was stuck with uh, with kind of a huge. Uh, huge thing right a uh, huge uh, like a, a task to accomplish which is not attainable um, and now she kind of while doing that she kind of changed the whole mentality and now giving into the new CEO is more in terms of like hey you can focus on the growth you have this I'm assigning this kind of resources I put importance on the culture change the mentality making a whole team so they're really focusing on that so which I kind of uh, like I would say uh, so that sums about it for the CEO part so now I'm going to switch to my computer. Then afterwards we'll kind of go into the valuation and all the all the sweet numbers. So let me just move my stuff around. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So here we go. Um, cool. So this is kind of the Q4 earnings. Uh, I'm just going to quickly recap uh, the whole thing. Uh, the kind of suspended uh, earnings per share. Uh, but sorry, share buyback to reduce debt. Focus on that. Because that is a main uh, main problem right now with IBM is their debt, which is very astronomically high. So they're really focusing on reducing that. So that is kind of important that they really want to do that, and um, that's that. So and the Q4 earnings were pretty much just not that great, I would say. And I'm not expecting it to be that great. Also coming, I would say maybe this year we can expect something good. But I wouldn't put my hopes up. I would just say it, it's going to be good. But you know what? Um, you're going to get paid a good dividend to kind of be more patient with them. So you're reducing your risk. So that's kind of my factor. I would say I'll cover towards the end in the opinion share buyback. You're going off topic. So stick to the finance. <laughs> uh, so yeah, pretty much their uh, EPS came at $4.11, which is pretty good. Um, and uh, also their revenue for Red Hat was up 24%. That is, is good also. Um, and their full year came at like $10.57. Um, and their revenue was down year over year by 3%. Um, and also they kind of said also over here, they're expecting this year to have, kind of have an approximately free cash flow of $12 billion um, with an earnings coming at least at $10.57. Um, so that's kind of that's very good to hear so that's kind of uh, important so I'm thinking that's kind of a good forecast and I think uh, with the current market situation I think IT companies will have success in this year and will not see that much of a lowering income I think would be a different would be more deploy more resources and people will be buying more IT stuff so it's kind of good to see um, and and also I want to cover quickly the business areas I kind of forgot that uh, portion uh, so you guys can see that IBM is pretty big, they're huge, they're everywhere. Watson was one of the failures that they had, um, and I think that is, uh, they had a huge advantage, but they kind of didn't know how to execute properly, so that's kind of a huge failure there. Watson Health is something that's very important right now in the current situation, which is COVID-19, and, um, and people are using it, um, and they're really deploying it and helping hospitals and, and, and nursing homes to kind of uh, use their technology and supply chain co coincides with blockchain which is another um, we're going to go together and they kind of use it with like 
to able to track and able to kind of really monitor all their um, their materials and everything stuff like that so it's kind of good another portion is the cloud uh, which is Red Hat which I'll cover later on so yeah Wh which includes Red Hat and, and IBM has its own cloud just to make sure but IBM's own cloud has not been has the greatest success ever uh, yeah so next here so the evaluations uh, right now we can see here one second sorry um, their earnings per uh, well, got a PE ratio is 10 the 4p 7.9 uh, which is extremely low compared to the S&P 500. That's good. Uh, price to book is a bit higher. Uh, that's 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 something. Uh, it's higher than the uh, average of the uh, S&P 500, um, and the yield is at six percent. So that is something I really uh, like. Uh, so getting six percent is very important. <laughs> so it's like kind of getting uh, money just to wait and to see what happens, right? Uh, the PE ratio has been. It's kind of like the it's right now the 10 kind of the lowers so like back in 2014 so it's very important that like like back in 2014 the company was not the same as right now as it is with Red Hat's acquisition so comparing to that it's extremely low so that's very really attractive uh, for me and we can go a bit more in terms of like you know when you go like price to book it has its lowest uh, since the since like ever <laughs> Uh, price to sale we can compare it to historical value um, it's also in this back 2018 so it's, it's still like still like low um, and we can go also to the price to cash flow uh, we can see over here that it's one of its back to its lowest back in 2018 18, so that's also another uh, not low so it's kind of that's good so it's kind of getting a good entry point I would say that's pretty much my, my assumption when I read all of this is that it's in its lowest as it was like a long time ago so like a couple of years to even 10 years when you go for the price to earnings right uh, over 10 so that's like interesting to see for me is like okay I'm getting a good entry point I would say um, and then we can go to a key ratio which is important is the financial health that is something I always want to say is the current ratio is at one uh, which is very dangerous is because because I mean like if people come and ask like pretty much they ask them for their uh, Debt come collecting, it's they're really one for one, so they have no really margin of error. So that kind of ha adds a bit of stress, I would say. Um, but uh, but right now with the current interest rate uh, rate that's low and stuff like that, so it's kind of it favors a bit more IBM the current interest rates. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's for that. And now let's kind of switch to the uh, big elephant which is uh, Red Hat. Um, I just want to kind of pull up my stuff here. Give me. So let me just pull this up here. So I just want to pull this chart here. Let me just from a statista and and want to kind of bring this also up. Uh, let me bring this here. And boom. Okay, we got it here. Um, yeah, sorry to kind of kind of look back and forth, just making sure I got everything here. Um, and so the now, so we're talking about Red Hat, which is uh, which is something I'm really excited about, which brings a bit of huge fresh breath, new breath air for IBM. Um, the Red Hat acquisition comes, uh, and and the person new CEO kind of running the IBM is one of the main driver that kind of bought thought, hey, we should go after I Red Hat, and that's kind of really good because he was running the cloud division, so it's very important that he kind of said, hey, should they put the right person in spot? And the president has become, and the president becomes the the previous CEO of, of Red Hat. So that's kind of good because they're gonna play a good team together to kind of succeed. Um, and um, that's kind of important what I see. Um, and so right now, let me just see here. Let me bring this up here. Uh, so right now, the cloud market that's something very people already focus on IBM and uh, IBM stock has been diminished because of the reason of the cloud competition. Uh, IBM is right at six percent roughly so they usually tend to fight with uh, Alibaba um, and uh, so like I mean with Google and Azure and Microsoft, uh, Microsoft and uh, Amazon so you have all of this right um, and and the reason I'm not really focusing on, on on the cloud percentage I would say per se because it's good to see that but they're really focusing on people using their infrastructure of cloud uh, while IBM doesn't really need to focus on on that because IBM is more on terms of it connects everything right that's kind of a way how IBM sees itself 
and and with the red hat acquisition adds that because a red hat has always been the way of saying like like we don't mind where you are like which provider you're using we will connect everything together that has been IB, uh, red hat and um, Red Hat with OpenShift and everything, it's kind of great. It's because you can use Red Hat on one, on an operating system, on an example, on Amazon and say, hey, let me, s like, you know, I want to switch over to Azure, just like a couple of configuration, you're in with, uh, uh, with uh, Microsoft, you know, and uh, or vice versa. And, it's, and you can have one central thing that's talking between those two also, right? So it's kind of creating hybrid environment too because you can have stuff on premise and have stuff on the cloud because more and more companies will be like that because you don't want to be as a business owner you don't want to be 100% on Azure or on AWS or on Google Cloud because you tend you have to be a bit give some business to a bit of everything and you want to be able to push stuff equally on everything and if something like prices go too high over here and you don't like it anymore you want to be able to switch very fluidly with zero impact to customers and that that plays that comes into play is red hat and red hat is kind of the the neutral player and ibm is trying to be that you know it's trying to be like hey you know you don't have to use our cloud you can use it but we are more integral in the whole thing which is the second shift is the second wave of cloud is the services is the is the ecosystem that's connecting all of the all of the clouds uh and that that plays a huge huge role and i think that come add into the second second wave of the of the cloud movement and um, and that's kind of an important factor as well how i see the acquisition of red ad ha adds uh, what it called to the already high like you know consulting services and all this kind of stuff that ibm has and helping like you know businesses go in the cloud adds a bit of extra power i would say and extra resources that they can use um, so that's one and uh, another one I want to kind of cover is people always tend to say is IBM did they overpay Red Hat um, and and in my personal opinion and um, and I've been reading also other articles and also seeing they did not because Red Hat uh, tell me like and this is kind of funny but uh, Red Hat was a company that was generating over billion dollars in revenue uh popping almost close to four billion dollars in revenue and and that company was growing year over year 20 percent stuff like that and that company and tell me that company that you know software is free and it's open source because they're really driven to putting everything on open source anyone can go and download red hat and install it and anyone anyone can use red hat um but how can a company still generate over a billion dollars in revenue and and be profitable for another fact also and 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 like people are using them still so that's kind of an interesting movement and 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 and, and mindset that that i kind of think that wow that is kind of worth it because that means they're well driven management is smart they know what they're doing and they're able to turn something that's free that's open to everyone into something that's marketable and profitable and people want it that's kind of a huge thing right and and also another factor thing is uh, Red Hat was not, IBM was not the only seeker for Red Hat, right? If uh, you can read other places, if I'm, uh, there was like Amazon on them also running into them. And uh, also if I'm not correct, Google was more in more, more like the bull was searching into buying Red Hat. That was kind of a huge thing, but IBM played uh, and they moved uh, over to IBM. And I think that's a smart decision of Red Hat to move over to IBM overall, because as a company itself, you want to be like, like you want to be the special player and IBM was kind of lost and I think Red Hat can reorient it and if Red Hat was joining into Google would have been just completely lost in the ecosystem of already a huge player as Google so would have been lost uh, so while this Red Hat and um, and 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 IBM would have had kind of a, a good agreement because already with Red Hat's partnerships with they have partnerships with Google Microsoft and like you know Amazon uh, AWS so it's kind of like what micro, IBM does. But IBM does partnerships with all these big kind of people and kind of connects everybody together and like and uses their resources. That's kind of a good partnership that Red Hat came. So they had to pay a premium for that, you know. And and the earnings per share, when you think about it, like this is past earnings. I will drop the link down below um, in the description. So it kind of goes into their PE, the 67 back back in like maybe before they kind of closed. 
and their earnings per shares were always you know always kind of good you know like like you know a dollar earnings per share and like you know in q1 last one they had was like roughly close to a dollar so it's kind of a huge um huge thing right you know they're kind of like always beating uh, expectations and having a good earnings per share so they were kind of always on the top um so that's kind of when you average down their pe like you know their pe back in like 2019 if they all kind of calculated properly it was like around three dollars and 69 cents so that was kind of a 52 pe and when you go into the year forecasting if i put like a 15 percent increase the pe would be at like uh, 44. so when you see that is because a company like this it's they're always going to be in the 40s like if you see like you know like compared to Salesforce and stuff like that, they always marked up a bit higher. And Red Hat would have been a premium, so they had to pay the premium, you know? Um, so yeah, that's kind of a good thing. Um, and uh, and yeah, so I think I have kind of covered the, all the notes. I kind of put a huge note. Um, I'll let me bring up my notes here. So I kind of have a huge one, uh, a no <laughs> notes that I kind of put down, I wrote down uh, stuff. But uh, but I can share with you uh, if you guys want it. Just maybe if you want, like maybe, like uh, I will drop down the like down below like uh, the email address that you guys can maybe email me, um, and uh, and maybe I can share this uh, note with you and maybe like show me a screenshot that you can subscribe to my channel and uh, and and like you know just send me that to the email. I'll drop it down in the comments um, that you guys can send me an email. I can share the notes uh, with you. Kind of have a kind of roughly. It's not gonna be. I'll try to make it a bit a bit prettier when I send it off. If if you guys want it, um, so yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'm gonna let me just switch my screen. Um, uh, do. So yeah. So I kind of always make notes, and this is very important for me to make notes for this company because I was like thinking like, oh, I'm gonna invest in a company. It's I don't wanna be caught in a value trap. Does this company has a uh, potential and all this kind of stuff? I would make huge amount of notes for that. Um, yeah, so so for my case right now, I would say, am I buying? Am I think it's, it's worth it? I would say yes, it's worth it because you are reducing your risk and uh, risk and return. You know, you're reducing it in this current valuation at the stock price at like around 105. Like even I would, me yeah, honestly, I want to get it a bit lower if I could get in the 90s. It was like not far long ago in the 90s. Would have been really awesome. Maybe grab some back then. Uh, so I'm waiting a bit to drop to maybe increase my position. Even then, you're just getting paid roughly around between 6% dividend yield. You know, you're getting paid 6% dividend yield just to kind of maybe wait, you know, just to uh, just to wait and see um, what happens, you know. Like, it's like, and like, you don't have to worry. And, and the dividend is far being cut because their payout ratio, uh, which I did not share, uh, which I apologize. Let me just get that quickly here it won't be that long uh, so the PR ratio is pretty low also in that matter so it's kind of kind of reassuring that in fact they will not cancel or, or cut the dividend and they've been growing it for years and so they will not I don't see them cutting it anytime soon um, the pair ratio is around 60% so it's not that bad it's higher than what I wanted to be maybe like in 40 50 but still 60 I find is okay they have still money left over to invest in R&D and all this kind of stuff so it's kind of it's okay and um, and grabbing them at this current valuation is kind of the key because I say is you're reducing your risk and your value. So it's like like right now it's pretty much like hey you know like I buy them. It's a good IT company and like in worst case they fail. They they don't end up. But you know Red Hat itself is worth a lot. So they might be at off sell off Red Hat or spin off Red Hat, and you would get off and get money off that. Or they would just buy. So it's like like risk value is kind of there in effect. And um, and they just even if they go down, you're just getting your dividends. So it's not a big deal. Uh, so it's kind of that's kind of a good thing I see. And the valuation is very low. So it's kind of a good entry point I would say. And I think this is a time to kind of maybe purchase it and play a good player with an IT because they are they are playing it in IT field. They're giving the clouds right now with the with the with the with the situation that they're having. They are partnering up and they're helping and they're giving hospitals access to technology. Which is which is amazing. So, so um, yeah. So I think this is a good buy-in. Um, I do own it, and I'm I'm planning on adding more. Uh, I'm waiting for it to maybe drop further uh, to increase a better position and, and average down. Um, so I'm not I'm not really worried. I was just picking it as it was dropping, so I was averaging down as it dropped. 
so it's not a big deal. Um, and I like how the management is. I like the new CEO who we, and the new president. Uh, so, so it's kind of a good combination of them, mentality, working together to kind of make this company better. And, uh, and him knowing the cloud division and running and, and being the Red Hat go-to guy to kind of go purchase it. And the Red Hat guy there, uh, I think, and, and already open source and they're really strong on open source. So it's like kind of a good combination. And I think this can be a good pan out maybe in a couple of years. But until then, you know, I just am ready to be stay patient and grab some shares and then get the dividend and just wait. You know, 6% is not something just to be, uh, to ignore, I would say. Um, and so I'm reducing my risk, I would say. So uh, yeah, this sums about it for this video. I really apologize again that it's long, but I really, this, this deserve, it had to be this long to kind of go in depth in the company. I might have repeated multiple times certain stuff and I apologize, but uh, yeah. So I hope, uh, yeah, so anyways, you know, like, you know, drop a comment down below. Uh, I, would, I would love to talk with you people and maybe go in depth and stuff like that. Um, if you want any, like, to subscribe, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want this kind of, uh, if you want my sheet, I, I can gladly share it with you. Uh, I will just maybe put my email down below on the comment section, which you guys can maybe easily send an email. And I would, when you just take a screenshot of you subscribe, and I will just go ahead and send it to you all. Um, and I'll try to make it a bit more pretty than what it is right now. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you uh, very much for watching. And have yourself a wonderful day. Whoosh!